I love coming to this church and I love seeing what this church does in the community. It's awesome. And I just want to thank you all for your support over the years. And um, uh, I, I, I have to commend this church. You know, it mightn't have 500 people, but the support that comes from this church is amazing. No wonder the windows of heaven are over this place. So um, I just want to talk a bit about angels today. And uh, it's something that I normally don't talk about too much outside of the islands because in the islands we have a lot of demonic activity that's right in your face, um, especially our area. It's one of the strongest demonic areas in Fiji. Uh, we also have um, angels and visitations that maybe aren't so prominent as they are in Australia. They're still there though. Don't think they're not there. It's just that the demonic are a bit more sophisticated, maybe, here. <laughs> but they're there. And uh, I was in New Zealand uh, recently ministering in different churches. And um, one church, I was crying out to God, what do you want me to say? And he said, speak about angels. And I thought, wow. And now God's asked me to do it today. So we're going to talk a little bit about angels. And um, first verse I want to have a look at it's about a guy in the Bible who was a prophet and his name was Elisha. And Elisha was so in tune with God. And I mean, this guy, even the things that were whispered in the king of uh, Aram's uh, bedroom, this guy would know about. That's how in tune he was against the enemy. And um, anyway, one day the king of Aram he, um, he was getting fed up because every time he would say to the army, go this way, the army would go this way and the Israelites had gone somewhere else because the king had said go, but God had told Elisha beforehand. And so he gathered all the people together and said, now someone here in all his commanders is against us. Someone here is a traitor. Which one? And they said, it's not us. It's that prophet. So this guy decides he's going to get Elijah, as if. <laughs> Can you imagine? Sometimes the enemy is so stupid, honestly. So he goes and he surrounds this place, Durham, where Elisha is. And Elisha's servant gets up in the morning, probably cleaning his teeth. He looks out. He sees all these chariots and he sees all these armour, army around about. So he comes to Elisha and says, hey, Hey, what, sir, what are we going to do? Look at the enemy. And Elisha just said, Lord, open his eyes. And he looked above the situation and he lifted his eyes up high and he saw a multitude of God's army around about and angels. And I don't think they were little... You know, sometimes people have an idea. Angels have got fluffy wings and little cute... Uh, uh, halos and all of that. But the Bible says some have entertained angels unaware. Now, if I knocked on, uh, someone knocked on my door and I open up and there's this thing with big flappy wings and a halo, <laughs> I think I would say, well, that's an angelic host. But I believe angels can come in all different sizes and all different ways. God, God is not limited by some... Uh, Sati what's that chapel over in Italy where they drew all those angels? It's not limited by man's version of what angels are. God has angelic hosts. And I believe in the time to come, we're going to be knowing more and more of the power of angelic hosts with God's people. I think there's coming some rough roads along, but I also believe God's power is going to be manifested in a greater way. And the angels are connected with harvest. Woohoo! You know that, that neighbour that you always wanted to talk to? You can actually ask God to send the angels to prepare their heart or prepare a circumstance where you can talk to them. Angels are involved in harvest. So this guy, he, he wanted to know what are we going to do? And, and the eyes were open. The servant's eyes were open. He saw in the spirit realm. Now, when I first went to Fiji, I bought myself a pair of Polaroid sunglasses. 
And I went and I, uh, I, uh, I was looking at all the reef and I'm telling my friend next to me, wow, look at, look at all of this amazing colours in the reef. Wow, that's something else. She said, what are you talking about? And I said, I've never seen such depth. And, and then we worked out the Polaroid glasses were giving a different vision. We were looking at the same thing, only I had a different vision than what she had, even though the scene was the same. And I gave her my glasses. She said, wow, look at the colours. Look at the depth of the reef. And I believe today God is going to give us Polaroid glasses in the spirit. We are going to see. We are going to see like we've never saw before because this is the day that God has made. This is the day of the power of God being released unto the earth. So I want to talk a little bit more about angels. Now there's a scripture over in the book of Hebrews. It says about entertaining angels unawares. And... <coughs> which we've just covered. But there's also over in Psalm 91, it says he will give his angels charge. And if you have charge over someone, you have absolute control or uh, dominion. You know, when your children go off to school, I believe God gives angels around about. I should not be here today. I have had so many near misses in Fiji, you would not believe. And I'm sure Jason and others can testify how crazy the drivers are in Fiji. And I know I hear Indonesia's worse. <laughs> and miracles. And sometimes I think, I was coming over a hill. Now, there was a bus and a truck. I can't remember which way it was, but one was passing the other and it wasn't doing it. And we got right, they got right to the hill and I'm coming the other way. I shut my eyes, I'm telling you the truth, I thought I'll be in heaven in 10 minutes. And I just shut my eyes and went, Jesus! And I got to the other side. Now to this day, I have no idea what happened. I don't know if a couple of big angels went, whoop, lifted up my vehicle and over the top. And I don't know what happened, but nothing should have happened that happened like it did. Because I came out the other side. And I just went, oh my goodness. <laughs> And God has angels on assignment. They're working for us. They're ministering spirits sent forth to the heirs of salvation. And I just want to testify, we had a hurricane, the mother of all hurricanes or cyclones in Fiji just a few weeks ago. And I'm here and I'm very nervous, you know. I always have, I thought back about all the great things God has done. He has protected that place again and again. There was a fire coming over the hill and one of the boys went out and said, you will not go any further. He went back inside and watched the video. I would have peeked out that window at least. And the fire went out. And I've seen so many things. But I was in myself, I just like to know how we got on, you know. So I finally, and all the power's down, all the networks are down, I finally got on to one of the boys. I said, what's happened? Is everyone safe? Everyone's safe. Are the kids safe? Everyone's safe. What happened? Is the building safe? Marion, he couldn't get out what had happened. He said, Marion, I can't, I can't even explain this. He said, it's like a hand came down from heaven, rooted up all of our trees. Now, the winds that were coming, it said after the hurricane hit and it's coming straight for Lombasa, it just missed, it, missed us by a little bit, but the influence was powerful. 350 kilometre gusts. Can you even imagine that? I've been in 260 and my whole house was doing this. 350 kilometre gusts. And he said it was like a hand of God came down rooted up all our trees and threw them in front of all of our buildings as a wall of protection. This is not normal. When you've been through these sort of storms, you know what this is like. A, a tree that's uprooted just flies into buildings, smashing everything. 
And I looked at the photos, and I must have looked at one photo for a hundred times. And I could not believe. I, I talked to one of our guys and I said, where? Where did these trees come from? There's no trees here. And they said, Marion, two levels down. And I'm thinking, I'm trying to, you know, I was a mechanic before, I'm trying to calculate this. Okay, two levels down. So that tree got uprooted probably about, oh, 50 feet, whatever that is in metres. And then the wind came at 350 kilometres an hour and dumped them in a, a line that wasn't all over the place. How good is our God? How He loves showing off. And I'm sure last time, I'm sure this is what God does to me. I'm sure just before a cyclone, he gets together with the angels and says, how can we do it different this time? This will blow Marion's mind away. And this one did, I'm telling you. And, and the hurricane that hit before, uh, uh, we had these massive rain trees. And I rang up our site manager and I said, how is it? He said, Marion, you've got to get up here. And that worries me, that statement. I got up. I nearly fell on my face before God. These big rain trees, the building's here. One is thrown this way. The building's here. One is thrown this way. One is thrown. It was like, and then I'd been uh, teaching on angelic hosts uh, in our Bible school. And the students went out and laid hands on every building. Said, Lord, deposit your angels here tonight. And it was absolutely phenomenal what happened. Angels pushed those trees in not in one direction, in every direction, away from us. How good is God? And I believe so often, us Christians, myself in included, we live so below our privileges in God. But we have angels available to us. Now, I went across the South Pacific quite a few years ago now, <coughs> I really felt to tell some of these stories. Some of these stories I've hardly ever seen told. None of my family have heard this. You know, sometimes I don't like telling these stories. They seem so way out. And honestly, sometimes there's so many fruitcakes in churches sometimes, you don't want to be sort of, you know, one of the ones with too much nuts in the cake. You know what I mean? And so sometimes I don't say it, but God really put it on me today to tell you some of this. Okay, I'm in Tonga, and God just made a way for me to preach in many, many churches over there. It was supernatural. I arrived, I saw a Christian bookshop, I walked in, and all of a sudden, a lady's in a panic. She's an English lady. She said, oh, 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 you don't preach, do you? Now, I don't even know her name. I just walked in. I said, oh, actually, I do. She said, can you come now? Can you come? So on the way, she tells me there's 2,000 um, secondary students waiting for a speaker the one that was meant to come just had a really bad uh, sickness come on her right before. So I'm thinking, okay, how long have I got to speak? Oh, about three quarters of an hour. Okay. So anyway, God opened up all these doors, right, through that. Now, I'm walking at the back, and I'm a country girl. I'd just spoken in this uh, small group out in the bush. And I thought, if I go up this road, <coughs> I think it will save me a lot of time. So I'm walking up the road with my backpack and my Bible after just speaking. And all of a sudden, I hear something running towards me. I could not believe it. There must have been 20, 25 dogs all coming straight for me. Not the little puppy dogs, you know, the <laughs> type dogs. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness. And... And I pulled my backpack off and I'm thinking, I'll take a few with me. <laughs> that was what I was thinking. I was ready to swing at anything that come near me. So I'm doing this and all of a sudden a lady over here goes, Ah! And the dogs run off in every direction. Now, there's a lot of farm people here. Tell me, a dogs that have got a prey runs off in every direction? I don't think so. And I looked at that woman and I thought, and I just knew, that's an angel. There was no woman there. There wasn't even a house anywhere near her. And I thought, I just went, waved, smiled, and she waved and smiled back. I said, thank you so much. 
And I went and told my friends, my Tongan friends, who, had in, who just informed me, she said, don't you ever go down that road. It's owned by the king, those dogs. And, and those dogs ripped a lady apart last week. And I thought, yep, I could well imagine that. Angels on assignment to the heirs of salvation. How good is God? Then I went up to uh, Solomon Islands and um, I had felt the power of angelic hosts all that trip. It was a 12-month trip. I went to some of the most remote places in the South Pacific and I just felt the absolute sense of God around me. One day I'm in this very cheap hotel and I felt such a strong sense I looked under the bed and then I'm thinking, this stupid person, this is angels in this room. It was so, so strong. And you know, sometimes when um, everything else is away and no one else is there, God's presence can come in such a unique way. It reminds me when I was in Wangaratta many years ago and we were in a worship service. There must have been 10 or so people. We looked out and I could hear lots of voices happening. But there was 10 people. I thought, there is angels in this room. In fact, I wasn't the only one that opened my eyes. Everyone was opening their eyes. Uh, Ten of us, but there's about a hundred voices here. You know, sometimes the angels can't help themselves. I'm sure today when Jason was, you know, really just touching God, I'm sure a few of them come down and thought, let's get into this, guys. Because the presence of God attracts angels and people that are hungry for God attracts angels. And angels are real things. You know, they might look like uh, Solomon Islanders or they might look like Tongans or they might look like whatever, but they are real. God can make an angel into anything he wants. Now, I'm in Solomon Islands. I'm preaching in these churches. (coughs) Um, I've borrowed a Honda Civic that ran on about three and a half cylinders. It was a real junk. (laughs) Man, I always put a lot of petrol in, enough plus to get home. At night, I'd go out into the villages. Had a pastor and his wife in, with me. And on our way back, and it's probably quarter to 11, 11 o'clock at night, a big rain tree fell. And I thought, oh my goodness, big storm. Don't worry, sister. You know, when I hear that in the islands, I start sweating. You know, with, Don't worry, sister. And they take me up this road, up that road, and my sense of direction is... Uh, let's just say non-existent. So we get back to the village. Don't worry, sister. You just go here, go left, go right, go da da da. Anyway, so I'm going left, right. I got totally lost. I mean, I didn't even know what up and down was in the end. So I start to see this hill coming up. <clears throat> and I thought, well, if I get up the top, I'll be able to see the lights of Honiara. So I'm climbing up this hill. <clears throat> on the side of the road is this taxi. Now, all the lights are on inside. It's got full beam outside. And I'm thinking, what on earth? You never see in the middle of nowhere a taxi like this? And I kept going up the top. And I can't say I was really panicking or worried, but I would have liked to have known where Honiara was all the same. And I'm looking for the lights of Honiara, and it's a big soldier memorial. And I get there and I start laughing. I said, God, I am not lost. I'm totally lost. (laughs) Help me. (coughs) I come down the hill. (coughs) Now, it's probably half an hour after seeing this taxi. The taxi is still there. The lights are on full beam. The lights inside. And I thought, oh, my goodness. So I went up close, and in Honiara, you have to put your windows up on your vehicles because of uh, malaria. So I unwound it, he unwound it, and I just spoke across and I said, Sir, I'm lost. (laughs) Can you tell me where Honiara is? He didn't say anything more. Follow me. Sitting there waiting for me. He takes off. We go all the way through the windy old roads and and then get to the Anglican church and get to the um, market. Oh, I know where I am. So he goes this way. I go this way. 
And then he sees me go that way, so he follows me. Now, I had a revelation. This ain't no angel. This is an angel. This ain't no Solomon Islander. Anyway, so he comes up to my window. I wind it down. Now, at this point, he knows that I know that I know that he knows. You know what I mean? And we're looking eyeball to eyeball. And I've got the biggest smile on my face. And I said, sir, thank you so much. And he said, I've just got to make sure you're okay. I said, I am now. <laughs> and I just, I had the biggest smile for the next six months, I think, knowing that God had done that for me. I'm in the middle of this place. The E was really showing because I'd been lost for over an hour or more. And here I am in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of Honiara's back roads, and God sent an angel to help me who drove a taxi. That's original. I don't ask me the details. I don't know details, but I know who that was. And then I had a couple of friends come up with me, Bev and Heather, sisters. And we were going up with our three-and-a-half-cylinder vehicle up the hill. And it's going... Uh, 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 and there's big grooves in the road. Now, I, I grew up in the Murrabit uh, driving school in the north of Victoria, either mud or dust, so I'm pretty good at driving in the mud. So I'm going up, but I knew we're finished. We're not going to get up this hill. It's going like this. I said, Lord, get those angels pushing. It went, mm -mm, vroom! <laughs> and my friend went, up. I said, angel. <laughs> You know, we have angels. I was also going past the police station and all the lights went off just before. I said, Lord, lights. Lights came on. This is true. Lights came on past the police station, then went off again. I don't know, maybe my faith only went that far, but I thought that was funny. You know, God has angels available to us. We don't know what's coming in the time we're living in. But I know one thing God does. And God is going to give us Polaroid Holy Ghost glasses that we're going to be able to move in a dimension I believe we've never moved in before, especially when it's in the harvest time. Because the Bible says in the book of Matthew that the angels are sent out into the harvest. And God's going to do that for us. He's going to send angels out into the harvest to prepare lives to come into the kingdom of God. But we need to be ready to embrace a new way of looking at it. You know, if my friend way back, if she didn't take my glasses and put them on and begin to see, she wouldn't have saw what I saw. And I believe we need to ask God in this time to show us and I'm sure these guys will have many experiences of things that have happened in our life, especially missionaries, where God does supernatural things. So I just want to encourage you this morning just to really cry out to God to get Polaroid glasses in the spirit so you can see in the realms of the supernatural. And, you know, I believe the realms of the supernatural are even more real than our natural realms here. You know, God's doing something today. He's, he's getting a harvest ready. I believe we're on, the, we're on the edge of probably the greatest worldwide harvest ever to hit planet Earth. And we need to be in tune with angels. It doesn't mean that we say, go here, go there. I ask God to tell them to go there. He's, he's there, he's angels. But I'd say, Lord, can you send your angels over here? And we were in, I'll just tell you one more story, otherwise I'll start in 50. Um, we were on, uh, in our Bible school. I, we'd been doing a, a section on angels. And so we were starting our primary school. I said to the students, let's write down everything we need. Now we've got a budget of zero. We've got no money in the bank. And we did it. And we started to pray. I was just blown away at what God did. It was like an angel's up there with the clipboard. Yep, tick, this one. And one thing that was on this list was bifold doors. 
something, you know, you can pick up anywhere. Not. <laughs> These were big bifold doors, um, almost the, across here, between two classrooms. And one of my Kiwi mates rang me up and said, Marion, he, he speaks like this, you want some bifold doors? And I said, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll get you some. Now, I'd done the sums, just the tracks were $3,000, just the tracks. And he, there was a hall over in, um, in the Christchurch area and this hall closed down and all these bifold doors with all the tracks that were exactly the size of our room were sitting there. <laughs> I think the angel just went around, uh, there's, a, there's a hall with what you need and it's Remu timber. This is like the cream of all timber. I mean, this stuff's worth an absolute fortune. So we brought it over and I'm thinking, oh, we're going to have to shave this off. We laid it out and the guy said, no, nah, probably only about, you know, an eighth of an inch here and there. And I'm laying it out and I'm thinking, we didn't even measure these things and here they are. And it was like that with each one. God just went right down and did it. Angels on assignment for you. Awesome. God is good. Amen. Oh, yes. Who's ready to employ some angels? Nothing worse than an unemployed angel. But uh, yeah. So um, I want to pray. Pray for some of us here today. Maybe some of us may be experiencing some challenges. Maybe some of us may be struggling with stuff. Um, let's pray that God you know, I hope we've been encouraged in faith by hearing some of these testimonies. But let's be encouraged to know that we too can ask of God and that He can deliver our needs. Yeah? He could send angels. He could just, I don't know, zap us, whatever. You know, it's, um, let's do that. You ready? So let's just open up your hearts and let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you know where we're all at. Father, for some of us, we need a miracle right now. And Father, for some of us, we're just believing for something that we need. Father, for others, they need healing. For others, maybe they've come to church and just having some relational issues. Lord, the good thing is you know where every single person is at. And so, Father, we come before you now. We ask that you would just touch every one of us. Minister to us, Lord God, that we may receive from you this morning. And I thank you, Lord, that you will deliver what we need in Jesus' name. And if you're here this morning and maybe you've never, you've never given your life to Jesus, maybe you've never made that choice to follow him and, and connect with him. In the beginning, man was, and woman were created to be with him. And through disobedience and choices and sin, we've been separated from God. And then Jesus came and he died for us to unite people back with him. And so this morning, if you want to be united back with God, if you want to make that choice to want to know Him, then simply just pray this prayer I'm going to pray now in your heart. Dear Lord Jesus, I come before you and I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I turn from my ways and I turn to you. And I thank you that you forgive me and I may be your child, in Jesus' name. Amen.
thanks for joining us at Portland Christian Church Online. Don't forget to like and comment on the video, subscribe for more weekly content, and we look forward to seeing you all next week. Bye, guys.